Seven, I think. Alright. Ready? I think I got it. Okay. I think I figured out how to go to the upside down. Let's try this out. One second. What's up guys, thanks for coming back to the channel. My name is Nick Fran, I'm really happy to be here. I'm even more happy that you're here as well. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for subscribing. Um, I try to do videos every single week that are based around filmmaking, the filmmaking process, and also technical stuff that you can utilize in your day-to-day -day workflow that helps you be a better filmmaker every single day. This week, I uh, finally got Netflix, so I'm part of the bandwagon now, and obviously I watched Stranger Things, and I love the Stranger Things effect. Um, and I went on YouTube and obviously there's a bajillion different Stranger Things tutorials about how to do the upside down effect. So I wanted to do my own version, but I wanted to give it like more of a universal effect. So it's, it's more like a, the idea of changing dimensions. So it's like an interdimensional effect, like using your brain to go from one dimension to another. And so that's the effect that we're gonna go in through today. So first of all, I hope you like the little intro of me kind of switching from one dimension to another. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Um, and so basically, let's just dive straight into Premiere Pro and I'll show you exactly what I did to get this effect done. So the first thing that you need to do is get your selects. You wanna go through all your A-roll and find like the moment that you actually wanna use and then also make sure that when you're shooting, you shoot a clean plate. Now, if you don't know what a clean plate is, that's basically the exact same footage of uh, the moment that you're trying to shoot without any action or any subjects in it so that the background is actually clean. So you don't change the focus point, you don't change anything about the camera settings or the lighting or anything like that. You just take your talent out, and take anything out that you don't want affected by this effect. Just shoot that for, I shot mine for like 45 seconds. That gave me enough time to get a clean plate in the background. So once you have your subject and your clean plate, you want to go to the opacity tab inside of your subject clip and use a little pen tool to mask around the subject. And that's gonna cut it out of the background of your subject clip, leaving the clean plate to actually act as the background. And that's where we're gonna put all of the effects. And then what you wanna do to that mask is keyframe the expansion to so be like really, really wide and then narrow it like right before the effect actually starts to take place on the actual video. And that will help with like little movements here and there. Like it's not perfect on my example, but like I would tilt my head to the left, tilt my head to the right and it would get like a little bit soft there. If you want to keyframe the individual points on the mask, that takes a lot of time, but it's worth it if you really, really, really want to sell the effect. For this one, it was just kind of like an example thing. It's not really doing anything for like clients or stuff like that. So I just wanted to show you exactly how to do it rather than go into the minute details of getting it exactly right. So once you have your subject masked, now it's time to add the first effect to the clean plate. And the effect that I like to use for moving the background around is called turbulent displacement. Now what turbulent displacement does is it basically just wobbles the background in a bunch of random different ways. And there's a bunch of different parameters that you can go through to figure out exactly how you want this effect to look and this is totally up to you this is 100 user preference because we're not trying to replicate an actual effect from say stranger things you're actually just kind of making your own thing up and that was what i wanted to showcase the most in this tutorial was how you can make some sort of like otherworldly effect without actually trying to replicate exactly what another uh, film or TV show does. That's the goal here. So go through turbulent displacement. You're gonna wanna mess with the, the amount of turbulence that you can actually put into the effect. And then also the really important thing is to move the offset and keyframe the offset so that it goes from one point to another and you actually keyframe it through the timeline so that you can see the movement. That's the key thing is that the movement has to become progressive throughout the clip so that the intensity goes up more and more and more and more and more. Offset, that's the key for turbulent displacement, is to make it move, you use the offset thing and keyframe it through the effect. Also with using the offset thing, the higher the number, the more the movement is going to occur. And so uh, obviously with your ending keyframe, the higher that number, the more overall displacement movement you're gonna have in the scene. Then what I did was I went to uh, the uh, motion tab on the clean plate, background plate, um, and just did a little bit of a bump in the scale right when the effect takes place in the storyline 
and that just adds a little bit of an emphasis to you like switching to another uh, dimension, if you will. And that's just like a personal thing that I wanna do. You don't have to do this, but again, this is all just like up to your judgment. This is this is how you want the film to look, not how you want to like recreate an exact look from somebody else. So now we're gonna jump over to After Effects for one quick thing, and then we're gonna go right back into Premiere Pro. The one thing that I loved about the Stranger Things like upside down effect was the fact that it had like these particles in the air that kind of looked like snowfall, but it was falling like really, really slowly and it was always really deep. It was always a really interesting like foreground obstruction that happened with this whole upside down like snowflake effect and I wanted to recreate that. So I jumped into After Effects and I simply added one effect and it's called Snowfall and it's, I think it's called CC Snowfall and what you do is you just drag that onto your clip in the composition and then just mess around with the with the numbers in there. I like to make the snowflakes like really, really big and also add a lot of depth to the scene in terms of the effect. And then add just a little bit of motion so that the snowfalls kind of slowly fall down the scene, but it's not like a whole lot. It's really, 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 really slow. You don't want like a lot of snowfall. You just want these particles kind of floating in the air. And that really, really sold it for me in terms of like what the effect actually looked like on the screen. Okay, that's all we need to do in After Effects. We're gonna go back to Premiere Pro and I'll show you how to finish this thing up with one of my favorite new effects that I learned, which is called Tint. Basically what Tint does is it kind of remaps the black and white of your scene to whatever color you want to choose. Personally, I went with like a magenta and red uh, color scheme and I messed with the opacities and I messed with like the, the actual hue of like magenta and, and, and red. And I just, it was totally user preference. Like you can choose whatever you want. You can do like a blue and orange tint thing, which usually ends up really, really cool. Point is like you can choose how you want the colors to map. And I actually got this effect from one of my favorite movies called Mandy. If you haven't seen Mandy, it's a Nicolas Cage movie and it is absolutely bananas. So again, this isn't about recreating a specific effect from a specific movie. It's kind of just getting inspiration from a bunch of different things that you like and incorporating them into your own thing. So the goal of this is to give you another tool in your arsenal that you can bring into post-production to amp up your current edits. That's the whole point of this thing. And so that's essentially all that you have to do to create the effect that I made. And uh, after that, I just added a few sound effects and a little bit of music. And then I have like my Deadpool camera shake presets things. I'll link those below. Those are really cool. It adds like camera shake to an otherwise steady shot. Like I shot this all on a tripod, but I put a fake camera shake inside of it. I know Film Riot just uh, announced a bunch of camera shake stuff that they do. So check them out as well. But basically that sells the entire effect and you end up with something like this. That's all I got this week. I really hope you like this. I had a lot of fun doing this because mostly this was an experiment because I wanted to learn something new and I just wanted to share that with you guys. So I hope that you enjoyed uh, what I made today and it was just kind of a fun experiment. If you did like it, go ahead and give this uh, video a thumbs up. If you loved it, go ahead and subscribe. Leave some comments down below. I'll be talking to you guys all week about this effect. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll see you next week. Peace.